with the question, who are you? When you read the text, do you associate more with the crowd, the friends, or the scribes? The, the crowds came to the house when Jesus returned. We discussed this a few weeks ago. Some people came to welcome, some came out of wonder, some came to witness so they could go back and tell others what they had, what, what they had seen. Then there were the four guys who made a bold move, being innovative and creative to get the paralytic to Jesus. They went above and beyond to accomplish the task at hand. They were dependable and determined, and Jesus was delighted with them. Last week, we took a look at the scribes. The scribes lost focus of the main thing. When Jesus healed the paralytic, they complained. They were constricted in their perspective because they had lost focus of the main thing and they were confounded by the action of Jesus. Truth of the matter is, depending on the situation, we probably have all identified with all three of these groups, even the scribes, if we're honest with ourselves. There have probably been times when you gather some faith, not sure what to expect or how to react, like the crowd, we might find ourselves baffled by the actions of Jesus, not sure if there is any rhyme or reason for his action. Will he heal? Will he fold? Will he break societal norms? Will he preach? Will he teach? We're baffled. We're the crowds. <coughs> we come for so many reasons. I want to be a friend. I want to be able to step outside of my box and be open to the limitless possibilities of God. I want to make bold moves, declaring steadfast faith, believing in the impossible, knowing I can trust Jesus. I want to be dependable and determined, not wavering in my faith. I want God to be delighted in all that I do and to bless others because of my faith. Wow, how awesome it is to see transformation in others and in situations because you were bold enough to stand up, speak up, and step out in faith. Most of us probably don't want to admit to be associated with the Christ. Then we complain more about the process than celebrating the results. If we are more concerned about our about what our children have on in church than celebrating that they're in church in first place. That we are constricted in our views, not focused on the main thing, giving our attention more to traditions and the way things have always been done. We are confounded. We are angry and annoyed. We have lost focus of the main thing. We are berated by Jesus for being distracted. Can't you hear him? Really? I just killed this man. This man has been paralytic. This man has been unable to walk all of his life and all you can think about is what gives me the authority to do it? Are you serious? You're not celebrating in his healing, yet you are constricted and confounded by what has taken place by the process by which it is done. You are focused on the wrong thing. Who are you? Are you part of the crowd? Are you coming to welcome and to wonder and to, and to go back and to witness of what you have seen and to tell others about the goodness of Jesus? and all that he is doing in you, to you, and through you. Are you like the friends? Are you dependable and determined and, and going and making bold moves to bring others to Christ? Are you like the scribes, losing sight of the main thing? Church, this is our <coughs> new beginning, and truth of the matter is, is that there are probably be times when we find ourselves 
in all of being able to identify with each one of these groups. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I want you to come. I want you to welcome others into this place. I want you to come in wonder and in awe of all that God is going to do. And I want you to go back and witness to the goodness of God. I want you to be dependable and determined. I want others' lives to be transformed because you were bold enough to step up and to speak out and to go and tell somebody else about what God has done and what God can do. You're able to bring hope and healing to this world in which we live. That we're able to transform our communities one person at a time because we are bold enough to be innovative, creative, to get out of our box and definitely to take God out of the box that we put God in. Yeah. I want us not to be distracted from the main thing. I want us to stay focused on what is really important. I want us to hold each other accountable when we begin to lose focus and just say, hey, are we keeping the main thing the main thing? Are we doing it perspective of what we're really here? You know, the thing that gets in is sometimes churches become social clubs. And like the scribes, I'm annoyed and angered by that. We're not social clubs. We've got one purpose, <coughs> and I told you last week, is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. It's not for us to come in here and be comfortable, sing songs, greet our friends, check off our to-do list, worship for the day. Got it. I can now go about my week and feel good about my day. No! That's not it. That is not it. We have come. We have come. I hope we have come ready to make bold moves. To keep the main thing the main thing. Church, this is not only a new beginning, but it's our new beginning. And we come to this new beginning Standing on all that has taken place in this almost 125 years that Oak Chapel has been in existence. There have been some good days and there have been some not so good days. There have been some hills that we've had to climb and there have been some valleys that we've had to get out of. But yet God is still in the blessing. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. God is still right here calling the people of Oak Chapel to go out and to do a mighty thing in his name. We need all of us. There's no time for, for pew potatoes. There's no time. That's right, that's right. No time. There is work to be done. I am so tired of looking at the news because I haven't heard anything good in a long time. And so I have to read my Bible instead because it's the good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And it lets me know that even when things look dark and, and dreary and it looks like all hope is gone, that yet there is a sun that shines through. Mm -hmm. It's not the one that you know, we see the rising in heaven. It's the sign of Jesus. And he shines through those dark days. So I need you to help me to see that sign each and every day. I need you to go to school and to go to work and to go to the grocery store and the gas station, the community center, and wherever you may gather and let others see, see your sun shining through you. You're called to make a difference. Our nation literally is depending on us to make a difference. The only way hate rules is when we sit down 
and go into our churches and complain about how bad things, but not be willing to do anything about it. We're not going to let it go because Jesus, Jesus came for us, for us, so that we could have life and have it more abundantly, both here and in the hereafter. So I'm counting on you. I'm counting on you to come. I'm counting on you to be bold. I am counting on you to be focused on the main thing. Because who we are, we are children of a mighty God, able to do the impossible, the miraculous, Steadfast, never failing, immovable, and love abounding. God bless you. Amen. Amen.